What's up guys? John here with John's View Photography. Uh, I had a blast out at Albion and this is the follow-up video for that. Anyone who is at the shootout, uh, shooting zombies and scary people and everything, missed out on my night photography editing course. This is going to be the abridged version of that. I posted it a little while ago. It was like an hour and nine minutes somewhere around that range. So I was going to do a quick tutorial for everyone to check out. This is also consequently my first YouTube video as I've been, everybody's been telling me I should start something on YouTube because I do so much and everyone wants to learn from me. So this, even though it's just going to be a desktop recording, this is going to be the first of hopefully a long series of videos. So without further ado, I'm going to get this going make myself smaller right about there and let it open up the image all right so it's going to bring it into camera raw because this is a cr2 raw right out of today i'm going to talk about some of the edits that i perform and don't in here and why Texture, clarity, dehaze, I never touch. I used to mess with clarity a bit. Found out it was not making my image any clearer. It was more of a noise bar that I could turn up. Even though the stars seem to pop a little bit, it's uh, it's a horrible adjustment for night shots. And I for the longest time, I didn't really realize it. Texture, it's sort of the same. That's another messes with noise when you have an image that is sort of noisy which most are not not noisy in the sense of most people think but there is still grain structure throughout the entire image vibrance and saturation i leave there sometimes i will mess with my temperature if it is for some reason off i can tell by these colors the nice tans into whites the dust of that milky way some of the browns and then fading off into blue greens out into the outskirts. That is exactly what I like to see. The one uh, that I that I say not to touch is dehaze, but uh, I want to uh, give a little update on that. If for some reason you shot this when things are hazy, well, it might be something you mess with. I rarely mess with the exposure because. Frankly, it's dark, and I want it to look like it was nighttime. I don't want to bring that through the roof and kill what I have. I still want to keep the idea that this is still nighttime. I've seen uh, photos that have been, the exposure has been messed with, and it weirdly looks like it's the day. I will pull up, and they're all ready because it saved the profile pulled up. I will pull up highlights and shadows just a bit. It brings this. Uh, ground out and, and my truck a little more, even though it's really dark. And highlights will bring a little bit more of the stars in Milky Way. I never touch my whites because whites usually affect the stars. And when you pull that up, it'll bleach them out. The, the stars are colored. And if you pull your whites up, well, they won't be. So <laughs> try I try my best to leave it there and not mess with it. So let's open this image up. And this will take a second where I am recording this whole thing. It is because, let's face it, it still works quite well. Huh? I need to move myself over a little bit more. There we go. So uh, one of the first things that I want to do to this image it is noisy is I want to pull some of the noise back out of it. Now, uh, you will see that I'm going to make a selection of all this down here in a little bit. Uh, for the uh, sake of time and getting through this, I am going to pull the noise out of the whole thing. Of course, you can go filter, noise, and you can come right over to reduce noise and do it right through Photoshop's tool. I like Nix Define 2. Uh, it gives me... A, a little bit more control as far as what noise I'm pulling out. 
let this window load. It's going to have your noise reduction over here is just a measure. It does it itself, or you can reduce each one in sort of a manual setting. And I will take a look. I, you have the window down here in the corner that shows you the before and after of your noise reduction. And I can see that it is pulling just about all that grain out, but it looks like it's also affecting a couple of the stars. So, and color noise, I will pull back down 70s, 80s per image. That may change. Okay. Do the same for my contrast noise. Okay. Uh, maybe back up a little bit. And there. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So I'm looking right here, and there's still a little bit of grain, but it's really not bad. That's totally, that's going to work great. So we'll let it do its thing. That takes a second, once again. But uh, like I said, ancient computer. Uh, like my cameras, they're old as well. If, hey, if it works, uh, keep using it. The best tool you have is the one in your. In the is using used gear. Cool, done with the define layer. I am going to take a quick selection tool and I am going to grab the dirt, the truck, and the sign. Real quick here. Boom. Okay. Uh, all right. I am already in my subtraction. No matter what, when you very first grab the quick selection tool, even if you have the uh, subtraction select, it will actually have the addition rolling, which is quite nice. It's easy to grab a selection. I'm not going to go through and refine these very much you can see that corners no good uh, looks like i still need to grab that i will just for the sake of what we're doing okay all right favorite two keys control copy control paste that's control c control v zoom back out there we go all right so that's our dirt layer hanging out and the reason I have that clipped out, uh, copied and pasted, is because what I'm going to be doing to the Milky Way is not the same thing I want to do to the dirt. It's going to make the dirt look weird if I leave them connected and do it globally, so to speak. So we'll turn that off. I'll, I'll show you what we're talking about, but we're going to jump right into the first edit that I love to do on all these Milky Way shots, which is my curves adjustment. So in curves, I, I know my camera pretty well and I know the histogram. In curves, it's going to give you a representation of your histogram. You can change what channel you want to affect individually, which is pretty cool as well. We're going to be doing the whole nine yards, red, green, blue. And this spike right here where there's all this data, that is Milky Way data hanging out there and that's where I want the higher contrast to be to make that pop. So uh, knowing that this is the top side, the bright side of this Milky Way that fades off here, I'm going to grab it in the middle, pull up, and you can already see it brighten the whole image. And I know this is the downside out here in space and I want to bring that back down. And way up here, this is a lot of the stars as well. Uh, same reason we didn't want to affect the whites layer when we brought it into raw. Don't necessarily want to do that here either. So I'm going to pull that back down. So it is pretty much hitting your cross line to all the way white. So the colors remain in the stars. And I like that. That's pretty good. We can do a quick back and forth. You can see that it, all of this back here got quite a bit brighter, but the, the real brightness in the Milky Way
popped. It came right out. So the next thing I want to do, there's, there's a very uh, broad gradient of light tapering off in either direction away from the Milky Way. And I want to redu reduce that gradient just a little bit. So I'm going to grab a levels adjustment. So uh, same thing, this is your histogram. And this is the downside of uh, the Milky Way out in here where some of those blues and greens are, are hanging out right now, which I, I think there was a little bit of light cast that night, uh, Aurora cast. It gave me a little bit of green. That's actually pretty cool. But uh, I want that to look like night sky. So I'm going to bring the base of my blacks up. I'm going to bring it up here, let's say about 15. And you see that gradient hid pretty quick. Got a lot darker. Uh, so even some of this got, got a bit darker where we brought that black level up to start. Clear up at 15. Now notice the whole image got dark. So I want to bring the midpoint of where that image sits back to the middle. So we're going to go 1.08. And there we go. That's the middle. Our, our blacks are starting a lot earlier. And there's the difference. There's a lot more contrast. You can see that. Now that looks like that's night sky. That's night sky. Perfect. So that makes sense. That makes sense in my head. And as soon as we bring back the dirt, there it is. Now I want to do one more adjustment really quick to my to my dirt, to the foreground. I want to bring that up just a little bit. So once again, here's our histogram. I know the dirt is way down here, but I want to bring it up in kind of an even slope and just, just bring the whole thing up a little bit. So right in there, you can see that. Yeah, that came out. That came back quite a bit. Of course, the Milky Way just got you know, super funky and bright again, and it's not what we want, but we're about to change that. So now I'm done with that curves layer. I am going to select, uh, instead of selecting the mask, I'm going to select the actual curves layer, hold alt, and if you go right in between the two layers and click, you see that little sign there, it locks it into the layer below it, and now it is only that layer, only our dirt that we clipped out earlier that is getting affected. And there we go. In a few layers, just a few little layers, we are turning that Milky Way into some semblance of beautiful. Um, I can see my horizon line's a little crooked in this image, too. I'm, that bugs me, so I'm going to fix it. But, but there's your edits, folks. There is the basics of what I do to just about every wide field astro image that I create. That's, that's bugging me. I got to straighten that up. Um, it is a super easy process. I, I, like I said, I like to demystify things. Uh, if you're having, you know, troubles knowing what these layers are, if I say adjustment layer, pixel layer, something like that, uh, in any of these videos, and you're like, what is that? Reach out. I love answering questions. And thus wraps up uh, what will be my first YouTube video. Hopefully, this is going to be the start of a string. I want to do these much more often. I enjoy educating people. It is, it is one of my, one of my passions in photography is is teaching someone else that wants to know. And, and I like learning more. Every, every single time I go to an event or meet another photographer or something, I, I want to hear how they get what they get. So this is my way of sharing it with everybody else. Thank you for tuning in. And like I said, reach out with questions. And thanks for watching. Bye.